Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. If you were to walk up to me on the street and go, Don, you know, I've listened to some of your things and uh, I just don't think you're that smart. I'd go, okay, that's your opinion. You're entitled to it. And I'd be able to move on and move past it. It would not faze me. But if you were to come up to me and go, boy, that hair of yours, that's pretty frizzy. Wow. do, Do you really like wearing it like that? Well, that would be a completely different story, at least one point in my life. See, that's when I would then begin to question my worth. And I would go back to my original imprint that I received that said that I was ugly. And the only way I would ever have people in my life would be because I overcompensated and was always giving them what they needed at the expense of myself. It's known as dysfunctional relationship bargaining. Now, why would I do that? Because I was raised with a daily message of how ugly I was that what no one would ever want me. And if they wanted me, it would only be because of what I could do for them, not what they would partner with me on. And I would always have to give myself away in order for them to be okay being with me. Whew. Yeah, you can imagine what kind of life I began to live. Um, I was a teenage bride, very much pregnant, to someone much older, where I gave myself away because it's the only way I'd ever have anybody in my life because I was too ugly and too hideous for anybody to want to be around. Now, that message was delivered by someone in authority in my life because they were hoping that I would overcompensate for the fact that I did have frizzy hair and I did have a a big nose on a skinny body, but that I would overcompensate for what they felt was beautiful, not in revealing me at my very best. Now, why am I sharing all of this with you? Because you received a message that you accepted as your truth. It's one of the lies that is keeping you locked up in a fortress of failure. And today I want to share with you how we can begin to upgrade that feedback loop where it continues to bring more failure into your life because it's triggering the message that you heard that you were a hot mess and instead upgrade it to where it actually reveals you at your success. Now, there's a diagram that goes along with this that I'm going to be explaining. If you want access to this diagram, go to drewdawnferguson.com forward slash PC, stands for podcast. And there you're going to see where you can download What goes along with today's training? Okay, the very first thing I want you to think of is a door. And it is a door that separates outside experiences to who you are internally. That door, if someone has the key to unlock it, they can then enter you mentally, emotionally, and that will then determine the actions that you take. And it's not just a door to your brain. It's a door to your mind. And your mind is found in every cell of your being. So that there's a key. And what is that key? That key is an experience that you went through maybe one time or maybe repeatedly that um, got in 
all right, and and told you what you should focus on and told you how you should feel and the actions you should take. So it, it determines whatever has that key determines whether it's on the outside and stays there or whether it's allowed in. So the very first thing you want to think of is you need to change the locks that what's out there can no longer get in. This is the reason why I love hypnosis because it's able to change those locks. But if it does get in, then what's the second piece to this? Well, now it gets into what's known as your garden of growth. And you move into a forest in that garden. And it's the forest of either fear or faith. So whatever got in is going to determine whether you go into a fear state and you go into the lowest levels of processing in your brain based on fear and how you need to get away from that fear or whether you're going to use it as faith strengthening because it's actually going to bring you out at your very best. That whatever's on the outside, if it gets in, we now have a choice which direction is it going to go. Now, based on the, um, the, the direction that it goes, is then going to lead to production of fruit. See, every experience that's on the outside that gets on the inside and tells you what to focus is then going to determine how you're going to feel based on the hormones and the different chemicals that your body is now producing that goes along with those emotional states. You go into fear, you have to produce fear chemicals. You go into faith. Say that we've upgraded it and that experience comes in and it actually brings you out at your very best, then your body is going to produce chemicals that are going to reveal you at your strongest. Now, once those chemicals are produced, you go into the library of harvest. And this simply means that your powerful mind then writes down a record. And that record says when something on the outside gets on the inside, we either go into fear or into faith. And then that produces chemicals. And now we've got a record of all of this. So the next time we get triggered, the next time that door gets open, it happens even either faster, quicker, easier. Doesn't mean it's going to be more successful. It's just going to move a heck of a lot faster than what it was before. Then after it's been notated in your library of memories, now you take actions. You take actions to either avoid that pain, to suppress it, to repress it, to distract yourself, or you take actions of amplification, bringing your talents, your abilities, and your strengths out. Now all of that was determined by where you went in your brain in the forest of either fear or faith. But if you're in fear, you're going to be having actions of avoidance, suppression, and repression. It must match up. If you're in the forest of faith, then you're going to be amplifying your success. And then at the very end of all of this, you go into what's known as a feedback loop. And your powerful mind says, hey, whatever that was on the outside was on the inside. Did it go to the appropriate place in the forest? Was there a production of fruit? Did we create a memory around it? Did we then take actions of either avoidance or amplification? If everything lined up, then we got a feedback loop that is successful. Not successful as in getting us the results that we want but successful that everything lined up with pain. So the next time we experience it, it's going to bring us even more pain. Or everything lined up with progress. The next time we experience it, we'll have even more progress. So what's all this mean to you?
This means that in one thousandth of one second, when you experience something that has triggered you in the past, you're going to go through all of this. So you either have to change the locks on the door or you have to change the meaning of what was on the outside once it gets on the inside. It is time for faith. It is time for the chemicals that are bringing you out even stronger. It is time for the memories of magnificence. It's time for the actions of amplification. And that is the feedback loop of fulfillment. You want my assistance with this? Reach out. Let's have a consult to make sure I'm even a good fit for you. 1-636-699-7791. But until you tell your mind how this process needs to be upgraded in a way where it understands what it's supposed to be doing, you continue, you will continue to be triggered for pain and and you know what? It's time to take your power back. Let's trigger you for progress.